Hey there, you're watching Bourbon Battles. My name's Joe. Hey, we've got a really interesting video coming for you today. We may be the first people on YouTube to review this, and I'm super excited about it. If you can't tell what it is, maybe it has something to do with all this. So stick with us. Okay, so here we go. It's all about this right here. If you don't recognize this bottle, it's Chattanooga Whiskey. Chattanooga is located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That makes it Tennessee Whiskey. Is it bourbon? Hey, I'll let you decide. It makes all the rules for bourbon. So Chattanooga sends me this stuff. I've looked at their 91 proof, their cast strength, their rye, which I really, really like the rye, by the way. It might be my favorite expression they make. And then this comes along and shows up in the mail yesterday. Guys, I'm getting this before some of the people that work at Chattanooga get to try it. So this is really, really interesting. So let's talk about this a little bit. What is it? Where can you get it? What's it cost? Is it any good? What do I think about it, right? And should you go buy it? So what this expression is, they do this barrel finish release every year. And this is this year's. It is very limited quantities, and we'll talk about that. This is the Chattanooga Whiskey White Port Cask Finish. Worth noting, Chattanooga Whiskey is straight bourbon whiskey finished in a white port oak cask, and it's Tennessee high malt. That's kind of what they're known for. Like I said, 95 proof. So it's got a batch number on here and all that stuff. So if you look at the bottle, you'll see, and you'll see it on the illustration I put on the screen here, it shows you the mash bill, right? There's three different mash bills that go into this blend. So that's really important. So inside that mash bill, I'm not going to break it down each specific one. You can find all these mash bills by going to chattanoogawhiskey.com slash mash bills. That'll show you the mash bills for everything they make. Everything they have, every bottle they've got is what I'm told has a code on it. You can go to that website and fi figure out exactly what's in the whiskey you're drinking. Really cool way to do it. It's transparent. It's engaging. And with this, they can't really list the mash bill because here's what's in it. Corn, of course. We know that it's corn. We know it's 51% corn minimum, right? But it's more like 75 in this mash bill. But in one of these mash bills of the three that are blended. So also in there, you have malted rye, caramel malted rye. I'm sorry, caramel malted barley, honey malted barley, green barley malt, and malted red wheat. So there's all kinds of stuff in here, which I think makes this extremely progressive, extremely unique, extremely different. So what we know about Tennessee whiskey, what's that they do? They filter it through the charcoal. This is non-chill filtered. It goes in a 55 gallon drum. That's important to know, right? Some of these smaller distilleries like to use smaller barrels. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Sometimes it they do make great whiskey with that, but I like the traditional way, put it in a big barrel and let it age properly. So this has been released in the past with different age statements, right? This is five years old, at least going into the distillate prior to the finishing. And it goes and gets finished for two years minimum. That's a long time to be finished. And I think that's what makes this so unique. That barrel is toasted and charred. And here's the good news. We're going to go ahead and say it. We don't only really talk about this on bourbon battles but it's $59.99. In today's world, as you know, 60 bucks, and you might find it for a little more, a little less, and I think you're fine uh, either way. You know, if you find it for $69.99, I think, you know, that, that, that's doable. And of course, some places sell for just under retail. Uh, again, white port finish from Portugal is where that, that port's coming from. Uh, I don't know how limited this is in general, I've been told on good authority that the state of Indiana is only getting 36 cases. I don't know how many bottles are in a case for Chattanooga, but you don't have to do the math very long to figure out that that is very limited. It's going to be very hard to get your hands on this. And once again, thank you so much to Chattanooga for sending that to me. So let's get into tasting it and everything else. Before we do, I just want to tell you real quick, if you're all interested in expanding your bourbon knowledge, make sure you go to staveandthief.com. You see their... Uh, website right there. Use discount code BBB15. There you see it uh, for 15% off their executive bourbon steward class. If nothing else, check out that website. Uh, and hey, when you want to preserve your whiskey, you know, we love our private preserves. So that's sitting right there. So let's get into this bad boy right here. The nose 
is very unique, right? It's got a pretty good nose. So if you watch this show, you know that on Wednesdays, we usually do this thing called Whiskey Wednesday, where we give everything a grade like we're back in school, like A, B, C, D, F, right? And C is average. It is an average. If I said something was a C, it's average. It's average to everything that you see behind me, right? Uh, a is very, very high accolades, and B is very good. So we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the grades on this one: the nose, the palate, the finish, and most importantly, the value. The overall value based on the uh, price and everything else adjusted for that. So let's get into the nose here. Like I say, the nose is fine. A lot of times on this Chattanooga stuff, the malt really sometimes overpowers the rest of it. If you like a lot of malt in your whiskeys, and you're going to love everything Chattanooga makes. I like it. I like it sometimes. It's not my favorite thing, um, but there are a lot of malted whiskeys I like. Like, they're malted rye. I love it, right? Their cask finish is really good. So the nose is good. You get some of that sweetness in there, just a little bit of ethanol at the 95 proof. You know, it's not super high proof. And I'm not one of these guys that thinks you have to have 125 proof whiskey for it to taste good and get a lot of flavor out of it. I enjoy those, but there's also a lot of whiskeys, 80 to 90 proof that I really enjoy. So if I got to grade this on the nose, I'm going to give it a C plus. So it's right in that average to just a tick above average. It's very unique. That's why it gets that plus. And as you can see, uh, this isn't the first day I've been into it. I got this bottle yesterday, so I wanted to taste it. As soon as I got it, I was very excited to get it. All right, let's get into the palate a little bit here. Right away, the first thing I notice is that creamy fruitiness. Um, you get a little bit of that rye spice in there. You get uh, fruits, right? It's fruity. It's sweet. That's, that's that port shining through. The palate is, I'm going to say, is very, very good. I'm going to give the palate a B plus. So that's quite, you know, B minus would be above average. B plus is a very, very good palate. But this is where this whiskey shines. That's in the finish. I can still taste that. The finish just goes on and on and on. It's not going to show through here which surprises me because it doesn't have a lot of legs, right, to what would normally be associated with a great pal, a great finish. I'm actually going to give the finish an A- minus on this one. That sweetness from the port sticks around, sticks right back there on the back of your tongue. It's very enjoyable. This is the kind of whiskey that I would sit back, watch a movie, and really, really spend some time with. And just so you get an idea, yesterday I smoked it I smoked a big old Maduro cigar with it. It paired extremely well for, with a robust cigar. That, that full flavor cigar, strong cigar, I would say this was. Uh, I wish I could tell you what it was, but I don't remember. Um, the sweetness really paired fantastically with it. So if I had to give it a grade with pairing it with a cigar, I would say an A for that strong Maduro cigar. The value on this at $59.99, there's just not a lot you can get at that price point, especially a limited release, especially a finish with this much care, this kind of blend and everything that goes into that, just the whole process, the two years of finishing it in that white port barrel. I mean, $59.99, I'm going to say the value is an A. It's not an A plus, right? A plus values are usually reserved for crazy, crazy values, right? So overall, this is the big takeaway from this. I'm going to give this whiskey an A minus. That doesn't happen very often. Um, and I mentioned it before. They sent this to me. I did not pay for this. They gave this to me. Um, they don't ask for a positive review or anything like this. I've got four other of their whiskeys down here and nothing. I'd say a couple of those are probably would probably fall in the C area. I'd have to really get down and take some notes. Um, one of them might be like a B minus. They're good. They're good whiskeys at a fair value. Um, if you're into that malt, then you like them even more. I like them all. I like sipping on the uh, cast strength, which is 111 proof. Uh, the rye, I think, is probably 
really worth checking out because it's so unique. It's not like a traditional ride that you would normally get. So I'm not afraid to say that it's average stuff, right? They're 91 proof, 111 proof. It's probably average, maybe a tick above. So to get a letter grade of an A minus, that's a pretty big deal. Um, if you are fortunate enough to see this sitting on a shelf somewhere, I think this is something that the whiskey taters, the whiskey wise asses, the uh, bourbon buttholes, they're going to pass on this because they don't know about it. And hopefully I'm the first one to face uh, to YouTube to get this out. This is a 100% buy at retail pricing. And if you see it in a store that's marking it up 10 or $15, I still say buy it. It's an incredible value. If you like unique stuff like I do, there's notes that I just got at the end there that was, gosh, it's all, that finish is almost like the finish you get in a good cocktail, right? But with more robust flavors that stick around, it's just the sweetness of it. If you like sweeter stuff, you like the, the malt does shine through. You're going to taste the malt in it. It's just so, so good. The batch size, I just caught that, is six to 10 barrels. So it's very small batched. If you get a chance in your driving down 75 through chattanooga go check these guys out downtown there's a couple things you can do in that immediate little area there uh my wife and i did a tour there they didn't host me i did that on my own we did a tasting there they love to experiment which i love i'm glad they're doing innovative things right if you're a newer company coming in a smaller company like this you're going to have to do some innovative things to get people's attention and they're doing that so kudos to everybody over there uh, Blake, it's been great working with you, figuring this one out. Uh, hopefully you've gotten to try it yet. If not, give me a call, come over here and we'll try some together. And, uh, if you like Chattanooga whiskey, let me know in the comments. Uh, I plan to have Blake on the show here very, very soon so we can go through their full product offering. Hopefully he's got some secret stuff. So Blake, if you're watching this and you got some hidden stuff, maybe some stuff straight from the barrel that's not even been bottled, you know, bring that over to bourbon battles. We'd love to try that stuff. So. Hey, check this stuff out. But remember, drinking bourbon is supposed to be fun. Do it with your friends. Do it responsibly. But whatever you do, don't drink and drive. Catch you next time. If you drink, don't drive. Do the watermelon crawl.